Hello again, everybody. You have a problem with a no crank, and you think it's the fuel pressure, and you come back to the fuel pump problem. The diagram of it is like this, but it's complicated. Now, first, where's the starting point for a problem that we think it might be the fuel pump? So we look for the symbols, and this is a pretty easy one because actually all this page is dedicated to just the fuel pump. It's not a whole schematic of other things related. So now, where would we start from the fuel pump? First of all, I look for the symbol, which is the motor, the fuel pump itself. Then I go back here and I say, what, what is it connected to? It goes to a relay, which is most mo uh, models and vehicles have a relay for the fuel pump. That's nothing new. So these two things are nothing new. We expect them to be here. What is a little different is, remember I spoke to you one time and I said computers control everything. Computer starts your car. Computer starts the fuel pump. Well, here it is right here. Uh, ECM, engine control module, ECM over here. Over here on this side of the relay. They call this the, the control side and they call this the load side. But I'm going to simplify it and call this the input. I'm going to call this part of this circuit called the output. So in other words, if the input works, we hope that the output works. It'll be a little easier to understand. Now, we need two things for a relay to be activated. <clears throat> First of all, we need a, a B plus, a 12 volts, and we need a ground, or it could go through other relays like you saw in Toyota Camry, where you have th three or four relays responsible for the fuel pump. So somehow we have to come up with the, which one of these is the b plus and which one of these is the ground as you can see this dotted line means this is a module a computer module again ecm could be for ford we can have a pcm for gm we can have ecu for toyota it doesn't matter i'm trying just to explain to you the theory of it and they're all basically the same you need a relay you need a pump you need a fuse and nowadays, you need computer modules. 20 years ago, you didn't have to worry about computer modules. Now, you are, everything is computerized and controlled by a computer. Now, looking at this, we're going to concentrate on the input. This has to work first, and then this works. How do I know which side is B+, plus? how do I know which side is the ground? So, in this book that I have, with the schematics, you come to a page, and... It gives you more information. When you're not sure, you always look through the other pages and see <clears throat> if something could give you detail. Even though we're dealing with the ECM, PCM is the same idea, except it's for GM. Now, this is the outline or the component of the relay. These are the pins, the terminals, as denoted by this. So two of them have to do with the coil. When current flows through the coil, it makes a, a, a magnetic field, electromagnetic field, and then this closes. This switch over here closes, the, the, the contacts closes over here. So first we need this to operate, the input, then we have the output, the load side or the control side. So over here, as you see over here, 85 and 86, and you'll see what I'm referring to, 85 and 86, which is the ground, which is the B+. Plus. Well, 86 is the ground. So over here, when you go to the actual relay, 86 is the ground. 85 is the B plus coming from the PCM. So this helps us figure out which is ground, which is B plus. So remember, 86 is the ground. Let's go back to our example now. We said over here, 85 is the B plus. So that means this module is giving us the B plus. As you can see, I put 12 volts over here. And 86 is the ground. So therefore, we weren't really sure which is which, but we, we found the reference or information from other pages. And sometimes you have to do that with schematics. So this could be sometimes a ground. You know, sometimes a, a, a module and a computer could give a ground also. Like a fuel injector, they give grounds. So just to make sure... We did the right thing by looking at that diagram. Even though it was for a PCM, this is an ECM, concept is the same. Okay, now, two things that I wanted to mention. First of all is, where do you start? We started from here, 
we backtracked over here but in order for this to work this switch to be flipped this has to be energized where does it get the energy from this module gives it a 12 volts current flows in this direction through this fuel pump relay six and then four and inside if you look at the relay itself it's actually 86 and 85 like i showed you so current flows in this relay pin six comes out four and it goes to more relays or a ground which will be it's zero volts how much do we have across these points if this is zero and this is 12 we have 12 volts across a working relay and a, re a working control circuit a working input circuit fine Th remember this this is key this is key this has to work to turn this on well and uh, and you'll see why later on we said if this works the input works then the output should be activated if this goes to the motor it goes through a ground through the motor this must be b, b plus so power distribution and that makes sense because the power or the 12 volt comes from here and i wrote 12 volts over here goes in the relay pin two and eight now it's not important to know the plugs or the connectors which that's what they stand for in the colors right now we're just troubleshooting inputs and outputs so 12 volts here how much should i get out here well it's just a switch i don't lose any voltage this i lose voltage the whole voltage here i don't so 12 volts here 12 volts here fine now we know this is activated we know the input is working and we know that this is working when we see 12 volts here we know this has been energized and we know we have 12 volts here this is key right here it goes through the wire a plug let's say another plug and it goes through a fuse and then it goes through the motor the pump a 20 amp fuse now troubleshooting we like I said can't crank fuel, no fuel pressure we think we it's an electrical problem not a mechanical problem so we come to this now as I pointed out so many times the electronics of automotive is difficult you want to troubleshoot when you want to troubleshoot you want to get to the nearest point possible to this motor what's the difficulty the difficulty is this is in a fuel tank hard to get to it even the wiring is hard to get it might be in some godforsaken place under the seat who knows where in the harness it's difficult therefore out of all these components that you see i said one thing easy access where is there a point that i can go and measure and give me a a lot of good information and good measurements right here you can go over here also and measure 12 volts but we go further down the knot as closest as we can to the motor itself and the easiest point in this schematic is a fuse why because it's right in the fuse block this is the easy access port right under the hood of the car so this is the closest one to it we would like to go here to see if it's 12 volts but who's going to go in a fuel tank lower it and, and measure it over there or find some wire that's hard to find it's called easy access points so therefore, starting over here, I measure 12 volts. How much would I have to measure over here? 12 volts. Over here, it's just a fuse, right? If this is working, I measure 12 volts here. I measure 0 volts here. One more thing to take into consideration, troubleshooting. You have a fuel tank sender over here. That tells you how much fuel you have. Now, let's say this ground opened up. The wire opened up the ground. If the wire opened up the ground, guess what? This wouldn't be working. I turn the car on, I try to crank, and, I, and the, fuel, the fuel gauge is working. That means that this ground is good. Because if this ground wouldn't be good, this would not be working either. Why? They share the same ground. So right away, that tells me as a detail of information, if they both share the same ground, if the ground is not good, it'll knock out this one a fuel gauge also with it but it's not 
because for the remember once you turn on the car for the instrument cluster which is where you have all the gauges that are lit up you know the voltage uh, gauge the, the the fuel and all these things sometimes you can run with 10 volts 10 and a half volts even though you can't start the car those will still work they'll still tell you how much fuel there is even on 10 volts 10 and a half volts you might not even be able to start the car but the instrument cluster will work so we decided to go over here. I agree with that. We go 12 volts here, at 12 volts here, and a good working one. Problem. You see the pink? I measure zero volts. I measure zero volts. Oh, so we know, you know what? Problem is not here in the fuel tank. Thank God. We don't want to lower the fuel tank and then test it for nothing or replace it for nothing, obviously. So thank God we're, help, we're zero volts now what's the next step come back over here over here this is a key point i come over here and i measure zero volts i measure zero volts here i know the fuse is good i know over here the wire is good i go over here zero volts zero volts now remember if this is working this is working problem is we have zero volts what am i thinking right now I'm thinking maybe I don't have 12 volts coming in from the power distribution, or this is not activated, this is not working, or the ECM tokification and is not working, it's not doing what it's supposed to do to give it 12 volts. I'm gonna go over here, how much do I measure? Zero volts, look at the pink. What's the next step? Next step for me is to go out over here and make sure I get 12 volts to this switch, to the contacts right now i know what you're thinking you said how can i go to the relay and measure all these terminals well there is a technique that i've used and i'll introduce it and i don't use power probes i don't use no no lights and all these test test lights i never used it i never will use it once you have something in circuit you, the most accurate information is when you have the the component in the circuit don't take out the relay and there's a technique that i use and you'll see other techniques that i have Hopefully the, the, the views will go up and there'll be more interest. Hopefully I can go and show you real hands-on and you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. So once I go over here, zero volts, I'm going to go here. I measure 12 volts over here. What's my next procedure? Where do I go now? Well, we said we need 12 volts to turn this on, right? I can go over here and measure zero volts, but you know what? I have curiosity. I'm going to go over here, and what does this tell me? I have it here. I have zero volts coming here. This has not been energized. When this has not been energized, I, I go back right to the input. I know I need the computer, so what do I do? I go to this point, and sure enough, I have zero volts. What does that mean? Computer tokification. It's not sending a signal. It's not giving it a 12 volt pulse or 12 volts. What it needs to turn this on, to turn this on, to turn this on, to turn this on. The key is here. This is the problem. It could be a, a, an open wire between the module, uh, the module and here. You have to do a continuity uh, a check. But what I wanted to point out, if you have a short with a PCM or an ECM, and you take out the, the, the module, like I've seen so many times, taking out all the, the computer, that doesn't do anything because you know what? You just took out three, four other connectors that have about 200 pins. What if the problem is one of those connectors or those pins are shorted? You will know that because you just took out all those connectors and you said, oh, it's shorted. Oh, I took out the computer. My short went away. So automatic is the computer. No. You just, you just took out 200 pins at one shot. You do it by taking out one connector. One con if there's four connectors here and I have a short, I'm going to go and take out one connector at a time and say, short is still there. Take out the second one, short is still there. Take out the third one, short went away. Then it has something to do with that connector and I'll look at the circuit, not the computer. So if you're doing all, if you're taking all four of them, it's being done wrong. And you're gonna misdiagnose. So again, could be this module is not good, could be in internal in the in the module, or it could be also that there's a broken wire from here to here. You have to measure continuity. That's how you approach this. 
I know it's tough, but this is the best way to approach it. Again, about no starts and all these things. Uh, in a, in a, on a car, I was asked one time if the sometimes the engine, the negative goes to the engine block, and you think it might be loose or something like that. If it's loose, then you wouldn't have the power doors working. You wouldn't have the cluster giving you the gauges and the lights coming on, because if it's loose, nothing would work. I was asked that, so just remember that. Anyway, like I said, I hope I get more views and I can actually show you hands-on. It really helped much, much more. Um, and like I said, thanks for the subscribers. This is the only channel with more subscribers than views, believe it or not, uh, on YouTube. But anyway, I hope you understood this. It's a matter of not just troubleshooting, but getting to a point that's easy access. The easiest access is the fuse and the relay. Getting within the module is difficult. So first, pick a point that's easy. First, for, first, when you schematically look at it, pick the 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 the, the symbols, the components that have to do with your problem. This has to do with my problem. This has to do with my problem. This has to do, and this has to do. The wiring will be last for me. I'm not gonna concentrate on the wiring. Anyway, I hope this was informative. Please, if you have any difficulty in understanding how I diagnose or how I troubleshoot, please leave comments. Why? You know why I measure 12 here, my measure 12 here, because when I see the views and I see, you know, people don't ask, how do you have 12 volts? It can't be that I'm explaining it that clear, because this is a very technical subject, as you see. So it can't be that everybody is saying everything 100%. I, I would love that, but you know, this is a very, very technical and complicated uh, channel to uh, to really, really make people understand and. This is the schematic. Once you're in the schematic, when I go to the hands-on, I just say, you know what? I measure here, I measure here. What do you think the problem is? I'm not going to go through the current flow. I'm not going to go through anything. This is like a class, okay? What I did over here, one, two, three, four, means this has to work in one. This has to work first. This has to work second. This has to work third. This has to work four. This is the input. This is the output. If you have an output, that means this is working, if you don't have an output, maybe the input is not working. So remember that. Thanks for watching, and I hope, uh, uh, hope, I hope the views will get better so I can show you some hands-on also with uh, load battery tests, which you probably have not. I guarantee you haven't seen these things from other channels. Um, there are great channels out there. Scanner Danner is a, is a legend. Um, Scotty Kilm is a legend. Uh, uh, these are Great, great technicians in, in the uh, automotive uh, field, really. All the respect for them. But there are techniques I think that can be done without power probes and without these test lights and without expensive oscilloscopes. And I'll show you, hopefully, when I get the views that go up, that'll show me at least there's interest. Thanks for watching.